Hey y'all, iRick Sky here, and I got the Tello drone right here. You can check the link within this video's description to find where to order it and the various accessories online. Now, I've already, at the time of filming this video, I've already posted a uh, an indoor field test, but this is my first flight test outdoors. And what's interesting about this, you'll notice I have my anemometer here. There's quite con a considerable amount of wind, and I'm also going to use this opportunity to test the... Uh, the Mavic Air again in stronger wind, but for this video, the Tello video, we're getting burst right now, and I'm actually kind of concerned about my my camera equipment right here that I'm filming with, but we're getting 7.3 knots, 4.8 knots, 5.4, 8.1 knots, considerable amount of wind, 8.9, so topping out at around 8.9 knots of wind. So let's see how this thing handles outdoors with unpredictable wind gust. So let's go ahead and get airborne here. It is worth mentioning that I am using the uh, iPhone 7 Plus, that's the big iPhone, and I'm using this doohickey that lets me attach a gamepad of sorts to it. So really convenient way to fly the Tello. Uh, one of the great things about the Tello is a super affordable price, just easy to charge, charges with USB, Let's see what it does. I mean, it's, this is, if you're looking for a drone and maybe just a toy drone, again, these can be dangerous because there are spinning blades, but if you're looking for a toy drone that's not so much of a toy that you can't have realistic fun with it, you may want to check out the Tello. So let's get it airborne. I'm going to launch from my Mavic Air's case. Let's see. Yeah, you can see it back there, bright yellow case. All I'm doing now is just getting paired up with the Tello within the Tello app. If you've flown a DJI drone, you'll probably find that the Tello app is is also super intuitive. You know, no uh, no super high level degree of technical understanding needed here. I have flown previously, so I'm going to go ahead and delete my uh, everything I've recorded. This does not does not have a uh, at least this version of it doesn't have a, a, a micro SD card slot, so everything is is stored in the drones within the drones internal memory. So <laughs> this is a this is a test right here. The first time I've actually deleted the uh, everything I've previously recorded on it. It's crazy I'm not seeing it. Maybe it just overwrites or something. Let's see. To be researched in a later video again. This is my first time in the field. I've only flown indoors. So I intentionally, in case you're wondering, I intentionally try to take things out. I mean, obviously in a safe and responsible location, but take things out and poke around and try to figure it out because that's part of another test, another layer of the test that I'm doing, and that's the user friendliness of the product. So uh, right now I have not found, I went into the gear icon within the app, but I have not yet found the uh, delete previously recorded videos and photos. Oh well. Maybe you know what it's doing, maybe it's just sending them directly to my phone it's not even storing it in the in the drone. Something I've got to research offline. Let me go ahead and start a, uh, a screen recording here because I want you all to be able to see what I see here within the app while I'm flying. Let's see. Just got to pull up the record here. Again, none of my videos are sugar coated, so if you're impatient, you know, feel free to leave. We're just doing it like it is. Okay, here we go. All 
Oh, there's a considerable wind gust right there. You can probably hear it on the, on the microphone here. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get airborne here. We go back into the app, the Tello app. We're going to hit record. We're going to get some video of this. There's also a still photo option, but I'm going to do video. Yep. Okay, there we go. Recording video. Let's get her airborne. There's a takeoff button within the app. You just slide it to take off. Strong wind gust. Whoa. <laughs> I hope y'all saw that I wasn't in the way, but that strong wind, it, it was too much for the tail of. Yeah, we're gusting right now at about 7.3 knots. 9.3 knots. So we're gonna wait for that, uh, wait for this wind gust to die down and try to launch again. Hear that? 10.6 knots, 12.8 knots, wow. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Still too much wind. Let's give it another shot. The wind just stopped temporarily. Okay, now we got it. The wind died down. But as soon as that wind picks up, I bet this thing's gonna go, it's gonna encounter a catastrophic landing. Or crash, I should say. Get some video quality test here. Obviously there is no gimbal on this. This is just a very basic, very affordable beginner drone. I do have the warning, vision positioning may fail in high winds. Flying in windless conditions is recommended. Okay, here comes the wind again. I'm gonna bring this towards us. Maybe the wind was most, uh, came into play the most when we first took off. Bring this close to the camera here. Let's see. Bring it over here close to the camera. Yeah, I mean this wind is really giving this thing a, a workout. Oh, uh, there comes the wind. It is worth mentioning I do have the prop guard zone. Uh, not that if this thing crashed that it would be a big loss. One of the cool things about the Tello is how affordable it is. And again, even though this is probably likely still classified as a toy drone, it does have spinning blades, spinning propellers. So, you know, be safe when you use it. But the cool thing about this, and we're gonna go by this yellow case right now to show the detail. Even though you don't have a gimbal in this, and you'll see that within the video. I mean, this is not a gimbal stabilized drone by any means, but you're still getting quite decent for a toy, and especially for this price point, a quite decent and uh, entertaining experience with a camera. And being able to recharge this by way of USB is a major convenience. It's one of those situations where the battery is so small that you may find that you know, flying this for a few minutes. Right now, I've still got 92% battery life remaining. You may find that flying it for a few minutes that, you know, then you put it on your USB charger in your car, your computer, while you're doing something else to top it off. You may find that you may not even need extra batteries. But if you do want to get extra batteries, you can find those within this video's description too. Wind gust is coming through. Let's get our anemometer. We're going to see how well, this thing may hold its own in the air. So there's currently a wind gust of six knots, 5.8 knots, 5.2, 3.6. It's still hovering. So it must have been that strong wind gust when it was taking off that was the challenging part. 5.6 knots, six knots. See if I can see, if y'all can see me here in this viewfinder. 
3.8 knots, 6 knots, and it's still hovering. And it's actually hovering very, uh, very well. So, you know, minimal amount of fluctuation. It's hovering right there. And again, it is worth mentioning within the app, it says visioning, vision positioning may fail in high winds. Now it says weak Wi-Fi signal. And I'm not that far away. I mean, this thing, to be using Wi-Fi without any sort of antenna, this is just talking to the phone. It's actually very impressive. For fun, let's go straight out and see how far we can go before we lose control. So that's about the max right there. And I'm gonna walk out there so y'all can have a visual of how far it is. Let's see, I'm gonna, oh, the wind's bringing it back to us now. Let me fly it out max range with the controller. Oh, it's going further. Whoa, I'm gonna run down there so y'all can see. So quite an impressive device and uh, let's bring it down in a mild amount of wind see if I can put it on that case 69% battery life remaining the wind does get challenging make it more challenging rather So I failed to land it on the case. It fell over the other side of the case. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and we'll have a few closing thoughts here. So in conclusion, I did all of that in a moderate amount of wind. Again, we saw a gust around 10 knots. This thing held its own. There's 65% battery life remaining. The, uh, the control experience by using this, uh, let me exit out of the app here. Because I'm recording here, let me get that out and then we'll, we'll proceed here. Yeah, I think my screen recording may have failed that I was doing on the phone. Oh well. Yeah, it's disappointing because I wanted to show you all the in-app view, but this thing is uh, super small, super lightweight. The battery is that big. And again, at the time of concluding this video, I had around 65% battery life remaining. So being able to simply recharge, you know, stick in your, your little micro, I think it's called micro USB. Stick that in, recharge it in the field. You got a USB battery bank, you got a car charger, you know, whatever device you may be using to recharge a USB device, it makes it super convenient. Super lightweight, super small, yet it was still able to handle, after those first two takeoff attempts, it was able to handle the moderate wind. So that was, uh, I found that to be pretty impressive for something so small, so lightweight, and so inexpensive. So tell me what you think. Check the link within this video's description. You can find where to order the Tello drone. You can find where to order the controller that I was using. And it's worth mentioning, this controller is optional. You could simply use your smartphone if you chose to do if you choose to do so without having to uh, invest in a in a gamepad style add-on for your smartphone. So to get in on it on the cheap and to be able to find out, hey, do I enjoy the hobby of flying drones or do I not? This is probably, at the time of posting this video, this is probably the most realistic example of what the larger drones are capable of. And it's, it's highly apparent 
that DJI's DNA flows throughout this design. And uh, it's very impressive, you know, despite the small price tag, the small size, the small weight, it's very impressive. And it doesn't have GPS, it doesn't have a gimbal, you know, you're not getting all that fancy stuff, but you're getting a, a very accurate representation of what the bigger drones feel like. So with that being said, I really like the Tello. Again, check the link within this video's description. You can find where to order the Tello and the various accessories online. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's youtube.com forward slash iRigSky. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, iRigSky here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. It's viewers like you that enable my channel to continue to grow. Thank you.